Before we get to that, I just want to see, is there any mail? Are there any bills to pay? Uh, there's mail in front of you. There's one bill. Let's go over the mail and the bills. We have Which, which one are you talking Three, about? Three, Littleton Road. Is that down this end or is that? That must be the other end. You're 300 and Mike Kimball is 400, so that's the other end. Never mind. Okay. And 37 Broadway Street. So these can be recycled then. Okay. And then um, this is a bill for Gatehouse Media that's approved for payment, so I'll sign that and send that your way. Now we can go over minutes. Let's do the January minutes. The August minutes um, are fairly complicated, and Cheryl and I stood down from those, so I think that um, I need to fix some things in it. Well, you should stood down from a particular case. But not yeah, and there, for stood there's down a from bunch of things that I need to fix in the beginning of it. So yeah, like, yeah, I don't want to do them today yeah. just because there's an awful lot of things, all right? Yeah. Can, can we please, because I need them done? They'll be because done, but I don't want to do them today. No. I just want to skip that set for today. And um, I think we will they get need to them. I make your comments and um, but I've asked for a decision to be made that would include these minutes. So I'd really appreciate if we could do them today or at least part of them today. So oh. I, I don't, you know, I, I would like not to do them today. Okay. And um, we can get to them at the next meeting. This is an awful lot in them and there were people who stood down from them. So Helen, you didn't stand down from the seventy six to have one row, did you? No. You didn't have to stand down from that. So it was it was uh the Allens. Yeah. Okay, I just I <coughs> we'll uh, do the next meeting. I want to do the January ones today. Okay. Bill, you want to start with January? I, I haven't had a chance because I've been away on vacation and just got in and picked it up um, late this morning. Oh, all I right. I had a chance to look at um, January, October, and I just started going through August, but so. All right. So I've got January, and because we're going to have Omni again tonight, I think I'd like to go through the January one, and then have any of you others? Okay. Has anyone else uh, had a chance to look at January's? Okay. <laughs> we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like we to can knock do it fairly quickly. We could. They're, they're not well, that complicated. Right. So let me just find my notes and start them. January. I would go down to on the first page where it says Cheryl Hollinger stated she's against the internal illumination. Could you at please add for a sign this size? Okay, so I'll start. I wanted to start at the beginning of that one if I can find my beginning. I'm January sure. 15th, okay. Got it. So um, just a little grammatical stuff in the beginning. <coughs> On line where the paragraph starts, the board then discussed then on line four, it says uh, on the same hearing, it should say in the same hearing. Uh, so a petitioner could have both a special permit and variance in the same hearing. Okay. And then going down to 37 Air Road, um, it just again, grammatical, about four lines down, they realize, I want that to say, they realized they were unprepared with a complete filing. So, 
would like to present information they have, comma, but ask that no vote be taken tonight and then the rest of it is fine. Except for I wanted that addition. And where's your addition? Cheryl Hollinger stated she's against internal illumination. Yeah, that's the next wanted... paragraph. One second, I'm still in this paragraph, sorry. Sorry. The next sentence, I would like to say, the next paragraph should say, the property is in an industrial A district, please. I think it's important to try to put the zone that the property is in on our minutes. And then I would like to take out the line that says Chair Gould stated she went by the site tonight and was pleased how many tenants. It's not relevant to the decision and it was sort of a, an aside just to tell the applicant. Um, and then I like abutters our Littleton Electric, wetlands across the street and residential up on the hill is fine. Then Hollinger stated and then go ahead. She is a, against the internal elimination. For a sign of this size. Okay. And then going on to the next page. Anybody else? Uh, okay, so the next <coughs> discussion, 221 Great Road was fine. I, I think it was stated fine. <coughs> um, 8 o'clock p.m. discussion, case number 795B. Second paragraph, and I just wanted to clarify, Chair Gould stated that if the board finds the request insubstantial, <clears throat> information can be heard and voted on tonight. If the request is considered to be substantial, then under Chapter 40B, it must be noticed as a hearing for the next meeting. Next paragraph was fine. And down in the next paragraph, um, I want to I want to try to rephrase what Hollinger's comments were because they were good ones. If that's okay, and you can correct me if you don't like it. Okay. I put Cheryl Hollinger commented that her concern is the town had this problem with the farms. Semicolon. Houses were built and marketed, and the WWTF was never built. The goal with this decision was that the WWTF be completed before any occupancy. And then I'd like you to cross out the next line and put in this line. Contrary to attorney Levine's statements, characterization, okay, yep, of, of the condition as a quote, misunderstanding, end quote. Hollinger said the condition was clear and deliberate, okay, period. The board feared and then pick up on the next page. The board feared everything would not be complete. Are you on the next page? And I see where I am. And put in a provision for a performance bond or a tripartite agreement, but it was intended that the WWTF be completed before any occupancies. Okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. That's exactly what we, we said. Yeah, it's what you said, and it was very poignant, and you should get the credit for it. Um, then the next sentence is the. They really don't care. The, the engineer stated there are some minor things on the WWTF. And then the rest of the paragraph is okay. Okay? And then next paragraph. Third line down, uh, the beginning sentence, town council, instead of has reached, has reviewed an agreement. And then the rest of that is okay. Then the next paragraph's okay. Next paragraph, 
one, two, three, four, fifth line down. Uh, plant not being finished since this happened on a previous project, comma, and. Oh, I'm sorry. Fourth, one, uh, go up one line. Chair Gould added that initially her reservation was, and then pick up, about a treatment. Forget that the town was concerned. Just reservation was about a treatment plant not being finished since this happened on a previous project. And one month ago would not recommend this action instead of agreement, this action. But in the last month, substantial work has been done, comma, there's only 30,000 left for completion of the w WTF, comma. Therefore, she does not think right now this is a substantial change, period. We talked in there about it being less than 5% of the cost of the system. Do you want to put something in there about yes, that? Yes, I have it in two more lines. Okay. Uh, then it goes, Chair Gould also did talk to DEP's legal counsel and got confirmation what Ray Willis described as accurate, comma, that they treat the holding tanks like tight tanks until they're up and running. Okay with that? Then the next sign. Cheryl Hollinger pointed out the incomplete items represent only 5%. Is that what you said? Less than 5%. Less than 5% of the contract. If you do the math, it's actually about 3%. Yeah. We'll put less than 5%. That's what happened. Yeah. Okay. Then that's the end of that one. Then okay. chair, chair asked for input from the audience. Michael and Nicole, buyers, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. And then... Um, Second line in the next paragraph, Town Council and Roland Bernier's, and, and it was Town Council's opinion that the letters of conditional approval didn't seem to match the condition in the decision. Now, this is all what Keith said, and I don't, I don't like the way the rest is worded, but I'll live with it. There were two issues to review colon, the 40B units which fall under ZBA decision and the other 40A and non-easement lots, period. Then just cross out this because business and say there was no basis for not issuing occupancy on the 40A. But there was concern on the 40B. That people were buying properties that could use, that could use facilities for two months and then be shut down, period. Then, then I, I don't know, new, pair, new sentence. The town wanted to be assured that the buyers and the banks were aware of where the WWTF completion stands, period. <coughs> town Administrator Keith also stated that the DEP letter refers only to the 16 single family unit hookups and does not speak to the apartments. And the rest of it was fine with me. You were the, you made the motion insubstantial. You made that motion, yep. and then uh, town council to make the final changes and uh, authorize school to sign it was fine. Okay. So that said is done, and we will try to pick up. Motion to second the motion. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to pick up the other ones uh, at the next meetings. So. <clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes as uh, amended. The January 21st minutes? The, yeah, I forget what date January it was. January 15th minutes. I make a motion that we accept the January 15th minutes as amended. Uh, second. I can't second. I wasn't here. Oh, who was here that can second it? 
Patrick, you were here, right? Yeah. Can you, oh, can he second? Because we have five members. Yeah. 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 So seconded by Patrick. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, so January is amended. You're all right with that? Yes. Amendment. Okay. Now I would like to <laughs> lose it, everything. Find my agenda and open this case next. So the time is a little after 7.30 p.m. and I will open the continued hearing, case number 846 of viewpoint sign and awning for a request for a variance under section 173.35c for a proposed sign at 37 Air Road. I think we should name the owner of the property in this too. The owner of the property is... Did you see the mock-ups, everyone? O'Brien Real. Thank you, O'Brien. Commercial. Commercial. O'Brien Commercial Properties. Thank you very much. Did everyone get the email on the mock-ups? We, most of us did. Did I miss it? Okay, um, viewpoint sign. Would you like to sure. step forward, introduce yourself, and let us know what you're doing? Sure. We are uh, requesting the board to approve a 783 square foot uh, double sided externally illuminated uh, monument sign that, that will accommodate uh, 10 tenants uh, for the building. Um, we feel Bill, excuse me, excuse me one, one second. One minute continuation. Uh, we have four seated members and Alan as the backup, so Alan is, should be on. Okay, I appreciate you pointing that out. So who's not voting on it? John. Okay. Wasn't here. Is that all right, John? Yes. So we're going to put Alan on as a backup, and uh, Alan is the voting uh, alternate. Okay, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes. Um, well, anyway, we... Um, the positioning of the sign uh, would be placed 17 feet in from the road and approximately 10 feet back uh, from the driveway. Um, the reason for the size of the sign is, like, like I said, to accommodate uh, 10 tenants, um, which is really the tenants is the only visibility that these folks will have uh, on the, based on the position of the property, which is perpendicular to the road. Uh, the size of the lettering on the sign would be approximately 3 and 5 eighths inches high, which would be visible from 100 feet away and um, readily visible from 30 to 40 feet, which the traffic traveling at 45 miles per hour or faster on that road um, would be able, to, we would certainly think, uh, would increase safety uh, if people had to, especially um, uh, UPS trucks, um, loaders, who stop quickly on that road to find out where, you know, their, where the tenants are. So, so one of the issues is, is safety, obviously size of the sign. Um, like I said, we did um, change it to a non-illuminated um, uh, sign as well. We also took, as for the board's request, I don't know if anybody's, if you've had a chance to see these photos, but we did take... I have some questions about those when you're ready. Sure. Yeah. Um, just, I mean, obviously this is the, uh, the design, uh, what it'll look like, and for what the footprint would look like uh, on the property as opposed to the uh, existing sign at this point. So it's a six foot by 12 foot sign. Um, the positioning of this is a little off, but probably a little uh, far forward, but it'll at least give you with the a view of what it'll look like. Um, Did everyone see these? I have, there's a, well, you've got for, for size purposes. Yeah. Is there a question? Yes, go ahead. Oh. Um, all right, so it looks like a very large sign. I'm trying to figure out the area here. Is this including the posts or the posts then? Underneath? No, the posts would be underneath that, yes. The posts yeah. would then come po down. Po assume that. the posts are in, the, yes, buried in the snow. So the, the size of the sign is actually that. Yeah, six by 12, six feet by 12 feet, correct. Okay. As shown on the, on our illustration. So, and you're proposing to put it how high in the air? Uh, the... 40 the inches in the air. 
So by the time you were done with the total overall height, it would be it would be almost ten, ten nine, oh, nine and a half, nine and a quarter feet in the air. Right. And the existing sign is how tall? It's approximately the same size, same height. You can see by the photographs that we supplied. Uh, it's actually further back, which is probably even higher, but it's uh, the reason for we want to get at least a couple of feet underneath the bottom of the sign for, for snow. So it doesn't get buried in the snow. Um, and I note that you changed the lighting to external illumination. Externally illuminated, yes, yes. Shining up, and I noted that right. you submitted a statement describing what you consider to be uh, sight distances traveling at so many miles an hour on the road, on air road. Yes. Which right. was... Well, in this case, if the letter, letter height is three and five eight inches tall, it, it's visible uh, from 30 to 40 feet. It uh, also, can also be seen from approximately 100 feet away. You have, you have space in each um, eight inch, eight inch EO size for each name. So how do you go from eight inch down to three and a quarter inches for your? No, just the letter height, not the, uh, the size. Height, yeah, but, the but even the, so, you're saying <coughs> each space is eight inches no. tall. Yes. So, so I don't understand why your lettering would only be three and a half inches tall. I, I mean, three and a half inches sounds a little too small, quite frankly. Uh, to be honest with you, so, sounds really kind of too small. It's. But but this is just too big a sign. I'm having trouble with it. It's but I want you to be able to be readable. Sure, the, right. But the three and a half inches is based on basically a character count for the longest name. Um, we could make each, if you had a very short name, we could make it even larger. Uh, but, but from an aesthetic point of view, it wouldn't, you know, it certainly wouldn't look good. I, I just, I'm But the contrary, the, we, we also black letters against a white background, which is very, very visible. Okay. It is very visible, but yeah. three and a half inches for your lettering seems too small, but this sign seems too big. So I'm trying to come to some kind of if we kind, some kind of, of, of happiness okay. here and I'm having trouble. If we were going to do as proposed, as allowed, a 50 square foot sign, uh, the letter height, if we with 10 tenets, would be about two inches tall, which would be visible from only 20 to 30 feet away. It would even, even if we put it closer to the road. So the three and a half inch, three and five inch inch letter height is probably the optimum, unless we can go to a bigger sign, which is probably not going to be the case. So we, this is about eight inches tall. I'm trying to figure this out. Cause this is about eight inches tall. I, 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 I'm, I'll give you something else to think about. Okay. We have, there are two other similar signs up the road that we gave variances for, for size. And they have, they're, they're almost exactly the same sign. They're very nice looking. I don't know what the size of the lettering is, but they are smaller than this. I don't know what the dimensions are, but they're not this big. And those other properties accepted that size. And, and actually, it's the distribution center is one of them, which has trucks coming in and out mm -hmm. of there every, you know. So I, I apologize. I don't know what, what we approved, but it wasn't this big. And how many tenants are in that? It, 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 these signs look almost exactly like this. They have multi-tenant, multi multi -tenant. up a 10 to 12. Um, they're, well, not, they're not, I don't think they're 12 feet wide. I think there may be 10, I think maybe we approved 60 square feet or something like that. I don't know. Well, optimally, mm -hmm. with the 73 square feet, we're trying to give the tenants space as much space as possible. We could always condense the type face and make it a little bit. Maybe perhaps making a little bit tall, the four inches tall. Uh, but condensed typefaces are more difficult to read than conventional. Is there a way to look up what we approved up the street mm -hmm. instantly, like right now? Distribution center. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could we do that? Thank you. Take a brief recess. Um, can I push it back? Yeah, I'm going to hold on. I just want to show of hands. Is anybody here to speak to this application? Are you about us to this? Okay. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're the same size, but this seems bigger. The point may be the number of tenant spaces. Yeah. I don't think so. Well, that's what the signs look exactly. Yeah. They're, they're, they're generically exactly like this. Let's Ooh. just let's just hold off on further discussion until our secretary comes back to record it, please. Thank you.
<coughs> I also don't see the application in this file. Do you have a copy of the application? Or does anybody that I can put in the file so well it should be in there. Whoever takes it to bring it. No, it's not. I'm trying to oh, is okay. this it sideways? Yeah. That's why I didn't see it. Thank you. That was on the building, that's yeah, a different yeah, sign. Yeah, this yeah, is the freestanding. Hi, right. do you have any response? Yeah. No. I guess I'm looking at the whip. For, okay, it, it was a, it's set up at 66 inches high, which is five foot six and 108 inches wide, which is nine feet, I believe. Um, on that, it's listed out distribution center circle. That's property, not what we approved. Property though. developed by. That's, that one's not what we approved. Where's the decision? That's sort of what it looks like. Do we have the thing underneath it too, though? Okay. So then I thought we moved the thing underneath it. I don't know if the thing's there. Yeah. That, that was that was already there, I think. That was oh, that, okay. So that went away. Yeah. Okay. Or they they just put it over it. I think that was one of the. <coughs> We're actually trying to help you. But we really are. We decision. Want, we want you to be as big as your neighbors, yes. but. It says to grant the sign as as shown on the on the diagram presented to the board, and remove the temporary sign, but not right, the, not right. the granite. So again, it, granite it comes Martha back Linda. to nine feet wide, five and a half feet high, and it has indicated side by side two tenant spaces and four deep. Eight panels. So, so it's eight panels rather than ten panels. Forty rather than five. What's the height again? Uh, five foot six inches. What happens if from, you add from eight inches? From where it's over It's from the top of that. Panel. From here to there. Well, oh, he's the talking. Yeah. So I guess from my point of view, the width is, uh, you know, six, I would eight, accept six, extra ten. height for the extra um, steps, but I don't think as you drive down that, that road, there's a there's another sign that I think we worked on also that is, looks very similar to that one. And I don't think it, sh it should be any bigger. So I, I would comment, I have asked if there's any butters to this petition in the room, and I don't see any, anybody come in late that wants to speak to 37A Road. I would comment that, go ahead. All right. First of all, I'm disappointed that um, what we asked for, and it was very specific, to do a mock-up showing exactly what you have here. Primarily, and I know it was stated, that you know, to indicate the tender spaces and the size of the lettering, same as we did on distribution way, so that we could see if what you represent here is visible or not visible. I mean, that would have answered the question Ms. Hollinger had, saying that it looks too small or it looks too big or whatever mm -hmm. else. So first of all, top of 
I'm very disappointed I didn't see that. I still cannot make a judgment whether the letters are too small, too big, or whatever else. Second, I would like to suggest that on the sign that if you wanted to gain size of the space or whatever else, the 37 near road could come off of there and it go on the post. Would not be considered then as part of the sign. An address is not considered part of the sign. You know, you could gain a few inches there if that really helped. Or we could put it on top. Well, you can put it on top, but a lot of times it's down along the side of the post yeah. um, next to the adjacent mm -hmm. the road. Um, no. But again, without mm -hmm. seeing a mock up, and you know, it has been done many times before, and I know your company has done it our other towns. Yes. Uh, certainly, our intention was to do that, to get a printed piece, but we just, with you know, a hardship, it's just this past month was just, we, we had to really. Uh, Focus on our current then current customers, it, but we did do it for size, and that there is a mockup that you can view, and okay. the mockup wouldn't be really any different than this. But it would be, it'd be the exact same. But, but this shows location. This shows location. Would and you size be open to the idea of holding off the decision to the March meeting and give you a chance to do a mockup? Would you sure. size based on That's the comments from other board members? Yeah. Already been. I mean, if would that be acceptable? But, Sir, if, your, if your issues at this point would be just to see it as a live sign, as a mock-up, would be I'm certainly happy to do that. If your issues are it's still too big, then I think we need to address those issues and get it back to whatever size. Is I, I would like to address the size also okay. right now because I got to tell you, I'm, I don't want to play sign wars up there. I don't want. I have a bigger sign than you, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and he has this big a sign. I want. I want right. my sign. I've got more tenants than he does. I, I you know, I. I, would I mean, be, this is done because be of the fine. ten tenant. The other sign is bigger than allowed, and we gave them a variance for it because of the exact same reasons you're saying, mm -hmm. and it's it it's big. Bigger but on the other hand, it's a big sign. And it's, it, but it needs to be big. We accept the fact that it needs to be big because truckers are going in and people need to be able to see it and there's multiple tenants. Correct. I would certainly be fine with approving a sign of the same size. What's the size Inches. on distribution way again? It's nine feet wide. By five and a half feet. By five and, and, and actually, I'm less concerned about the height that the width seems right. excessive. I would, I would be willing to go six feet if he wants to put the address up top and do something pretty or yeah, whatever. Yeah, we could, um, I, I would be willing. I, I could certainly that. entertain six feet on that, but I don't want each sign that comes before us to be bigger than the last. It's, it's getting a bit, a bit. And, and as Cheryl said, we, we accept the reason for a variance. Right. That's mm -hmm. been, you know. Right. I mean, is is it's so? What I'm hearing is 12 feet is is still an issue. 12 feet wide. Yes, still an issue. And My, as a square for me, the six feet wide is 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 big too. Right. I mean, I'm okay with you know. I mean, the old sign has a little thing on top of yeah. it, that, and you could put the address up there. And I would be willing to say that that's so that's that's not really something like that but and I understand you want a modern look so if you don't want to make it funny shape no, we could, fine. Um, I, I I'm not trying to dictate your shape for no, you. No, we have uh, we have excellent designers that can that, that do this all the time so um, <coughs> I appreciate but I the, just want to make sure you know I'd be I know, more than happy to, to do a mock-up I wouldn't I wish but we you want to do one that we'll actually accept correct yeah, that makes one sense. that you know you feel comfortable yeah, with. I, I appreciate your effort in the snow yeah. with, the, with the banner <laughs> And also, I appreciate that you took away the internal illumination. Yeah. We do. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Mr. Farnsworth. All right. You know, I don't want to tell you what size to, to do a sign and everything else. The main important is, and I think as you outlined in your letter to us, you know, for safety, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, any national sign company, national standards will addresses that as well. There are 10 tenant spaces at that space, at that property. Right. And I understand that you need a sign out there and indicate up to 10 tenant spaces. For the name of the park or the center of the top and property managed by. That's why I think it's very important to see a markup with size of lettering that you feel is appropriate, the minimal size of lettering that you feel appropriate and to be visible. I mean, I think that should dictate the size of the sign, not us to tell you, <coughs> yeah, you've got to make it X by right. X. Because then maybe the lettering isn't. But I think, you know, you being in the business, right. 
knowing all the national standards, mm -hmm. looks good at a certain speed, which is 45 miles an hour going right. by there at a certain distance back. Yeah, we would definitely keep it at this three and a half, three and five eighths inch, at least. The two inch, if we had then, it to do a small, then, it would be, would be too small. So. I, I got to tell you, the other sign, the lettering is more than three and a half inches tall if you drive by it. So I imagine that you I can know. manage that. I, from what I had seen, it doesn't look, the well, tenants, the tenants look, well, you, well I don't want to. Well, you look. agreed that you'd go for a continuance to the next well, meeting can, and you yeah. can measure it in the meantime. Yeah. All I can say is I personally would not have trouble with the sign that was the same size as the neighbors because you have the same reasons, right. the same, the same, um, needs, same needs, the okay. same, no, we can, um, all, all the same stuff. Okay. And the other, in your neighbors motion. isn't internally either. Alan, you have anything to add? I'll take a motion to continue. Can I make a quick yes, comment? Ma'am. Yeah, I was initially thinking, comparing to the other one, it didn't look too bad. But then I look over at that whiteboard. It's probably four by six, and that looks pretty big by itself. To figure that's twice as long, that's starting to make me think it's awfully big. But the thing, yeah, and, and it's a scale that we're, we're standing on, sitting on top of. Sure, we're close. Yeah, yeah. Out, you know. You know, that's why, you know, you really this, 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 yeah. these help a little bit, but I'm, I'm obviously if the, the actual sign was printed on there, it would be better. Well, the it one, the one in comparison. But it, it yeah. gives you size. Yeah. The one in comparison is one thing, but the one with the two people standing next to it, you think, oh, my God. Yeah, I had to hire those two people. To do <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. I'm just <laughs> And, and they're very brave going yeah, out in the really snow. Giant, we appreciate it. Doesn't look so good. Yeah. So, so got snow in their boots. Keep, keep in mind that the, both Jeff and I have said that we have no problem with the size and size sign the same size as your neighbors, and we appreciate the fact that you're like they did, not asking for internal illumination yeah. anymore. Okay. All right. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Franklin. I make the motion we continue the hearing for 37 Air Road to March 19th. 2015 at 7.30 p.m. Yes, please. All right, well, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Farnsworth, I have to stand down from the next meeting, and I have to be downstairs, perhaps for the one after as well. So I will take my leave and leave the chairmanship to you and come back, I hope, for the 815 hearing. We will hold the hearing for the, that particular case until you do it. Then I will come up with a <coughs> with bells on. Gross. Got cookies go. around already. Yeah. Get as far as I can. Mm. Well, I think I need to announce I need to stand down from the next hearing in Washington because I have a financial interest in the outcome of the matter. So I'm leaving the meeting. Okay, being 7.55, being past the hour or 7.45 is scheduled. Open the hearing of case number 847A, M&M &M Realty Trust, for a special permit slash variance from section 173-10B1 to allow a change, extension, or alteration to a pre-existing non-conforming dwelling at 20 Washington Drive. Good evening. Okay, hold on. If everybody would just be patient, let me get my notes here. Since I can't take notes and listen to Sherry at the same time. I do have to appoint another member. Mark, would you be the fifth voting member? Okay. How many people in the audience are here for this particular case? All right, the way the procedures go is that, you know, case gets open and gets presented. There will be questions and comments from the board. Um, and then I will open it up to anybody in the audience who wishes to speak. You need to be recognized by the board, by the chair, before you speak. 
when you are recognized, you need to give your name and address clearly for the secretary to be able to enter it into the record. All right. Now, before you, uh, Mr. Field, I, you know, in review of the application, and you now let me lay out several things on the line out for you um, so you can consider it as you make your presentation. You know, in this application, you know, this is the, what, third or fourth application that you have before us and very similar properties in the same neighborhood, correct? Yes, sir. All right. You, you should be well aware of the criteria for the applications. And in fact, we had a discussion on it at the end of last. We did. Last I thought meeting. I did a good right. job on that one. So on this, no, to begin with, the cover sheet, it doesn't say whether you want a special permit or a variance. Neither box is checked off. So that left a concern as to you know, what is being requested. In the application itself, you did check off and sign for a special permit. You signed for a variance, but did not give, well, you gave the same section number for the variance as you did for the special permit. Again, that would be a separate one. You did submit a statement in regards to the special permit, which is appropriate as outlined in the instructions. You did not indicate or submit any statements as required in regards to a variance. Would you like right. me to come back? You know, let, me, let me finish and, you know, and then yeah. lay it out for you so you can decide you know, where we want to go in this. Um, you know, so the my in a review of this and everything else, I wasn't sure if you're looking for a special permit and a variance, if you're looking for just a special I'm permit. I'm not sure, to be honest what? with you. Okay. Continuing, in the statement that you, you provided a statement to us as to mm -hmm. what you're looking for, you provided a site plan, and you provided house plans. Yes, sir. There were discrepancies between the three documents. No two of the three agree. So I had a hard time trying to figure out what's conforming, what's not conforming, what you're looking for, and whatever else. Um, you know, because I, in your statement, I don't know if you're rounding numbers off that did not agree with the site plan. There is one or two spots in here that you say are conforming, but according to the dimensions are not conforming. With uh, the new so structure or the, what was the New existing? structure, new structure. So, you know, a lot of these things didn't agree, so in order for us to make a final decision, we need to get to a point as to knowing exactly what your intentions are. Okay. Now, the board is not here to lay it out for you and to tell you what you would need to build and where and everything else. I understand that. It's up to you to let us know. So I just want to lay all that out, yep. okay, so that you know, as you make your presentation that you Hopefully you will address these issues. Yes, sir. Okay. So, your pleasure. May I borrow the drawing? Yes, you may. You don't have a larger drawing there? I didn't. I have given all my large site plans in, and I did not retain one. Um, what, what we're looking to do is build a new construction on an existing non-conforming lot and move it towards the front of the lot, the same that we've done on the previous three. There was a structure on the lot itself that has been demolished and the septic system has been installed already. The existing, what was the existing structure was non-conforming on I believe two of the three, two of the three, the rear, and if you're looking at from the street, the left side were non-conforming. We are moving the new structure to the front and making it conform on three of four sides. That's my intention. All right, based on that, the side setbacks by the bylaw of 15 feet. Yeah, we're 15 feet on. On that diagram, it indicates 14.5 on each side. On the new, I had a, a full size drawing that had 15 feet on all sides. Okay, this is a drawing 
Dated 12-04-14. I'd be willing to, with the board, have the approval to be 15 feet and make it conform. Yeah, the, the foundation that the engineer drew on this is larger than the footprint of the house. Yeah, well, that that's, was that's one of my points. Yeah, yeah that yep. the footprint of the house that I've given is 28 by 34. And the footprint on that right there on the engineer drawing is, Um, this does not have dimensions on it. Yes, here. it does. It has 35 yeah. by 30 for the foundation. Right, right. right. But there's no dimension on here as to the setbacks to the property line. Correct. And there's no dimensions on our ones that have setbacks yeah. for the house. So, so how are we supposed to? Right. I'm building no, well, a 28 yeah. by 34 home, which will make it 15 feet well, greater on, on each side. Okay, okay. On here it says there's a 30 foot by 35 foot footprint. Correct. And are the plans submitted? Are 24, I mean 28 by 34. Okay, again, we get a lot of discrepancies here. You know, I'd be glad to go back okay, and okay. clean them up and re-meet with you. It, it, I'm if, glad that's to, your, if that's your flavor. Okay, I, I'm glad to hear that because I think that's very critical and very good. Um, that would be very nice of you to agree to continuing this until next month to work out all the details. Sure. It makes our job a lot easier and we can do a much better job in making a decision on this. Could, could I ask the board to, to consider allowing to vote with the contingent of the plan changed and the drawings at 28 by 34 and all the paperwork matched? So I'm trying to build two houses at one time. I understand that, but right now with the weather conditions, you can't really build anywhere. We're, we're, we're one foot away from the bottom of the bed, I mean the bottom of the foundation, and ready and to go. For me, my preference is I like to see all the documents you know, showing what it is that we're making the decision on. You know, I, you know, I have a hesitation in, in you know, you know my, my professional experiences and everything else, I've had problems with say to somebody, yes, no, I'll give you something with a contingency, and no, we'll see what happens later, and problems do arise. Yeah, I had that with me. I, I, I would prefer it to, but anyway, Cheryl? Actually, I'm gonna let Jeff go oh, first. I, you know, I think in the previous ones, I think what the, what the concern was parking. Uh, I think you did change this to a two-car garage, Correct. but the plan isn't I understand that, that. Might, that. I actually and that's that's engineer. what I would like to see is how you you know I you can do it in 28 feet but it's not done in the plan you showed the other thing I was wondering if you would consider is can you just show a, a graded parking spot to the side of the house just 10 or 12 feet wide or we can't because of the retain if you've gone up and looked at yeah. well, we're trying to keep them all uniform with the same segmented block walls okay. across if, a good representation is so you, so you're building so you're building the grade up and then you're retaining we, it at the right okay. we you couldn't like line. you couldn't just go in another 10 feet and this house is further forward than any of the right. other houses yeah. this is which is my problem with it I'm still having I mean even with the two car garage I'm having issues with the fact they can't pull off the road, especially with yes, us yes, with snow have room like for that. Right. No, let me let me address that. That's a good point. After the last hearing, everything else, I contacted the building inspector, who contacted the police chief and the highway superintendent, because I asked the building inspector because he wasn't at the hearing. When you go to issue a building permit, do you look at is there enough space to park on the property? Um, or you no, know, if part of the, the parking would be, John, hold off, please, John. Yeah. No, knowing that if somebody pulls on the driveway but not into the garage, you're it's actually sitting on town property. I even spoke to the, the building inspector today about this one being close to the road and if there was any resolution. It came down to the police chief had no resolution on it. The highway superintendent says I have no resolution on it, but. If, if, resolution. if in the future the town decides to widen the road, they would just widen the road and there would be no place to park. 
for this for this parking for this particular property for this lot line but this particular property okay you have 11.5 feet from the edge of the house to the edge of the property line correct 23 feet to the edge of pavement correct vehicles are 17 to 18 feet long you know so and, you're and right it, it it's they're going to be sitting almost if they're in the touch the front bumpers touching the, the garage door you're going to be almost into the street the back end highway superintendent and the police chief says a lot of the vehicles are totally off the off the pavement it's not a problem but as soon as somebody doesn't get close enough and the back end stick out a little bit it's going to be a problem but that's something for you to consider that's beyond the scope of this board but well, actually it's that leads no to the question and i understand why you said on the other property you needed to be certain this is away from the septic system the septic system in this lot is in the same location as the one adjoining it but the house is deeper so it says that do you really need a building that deep and push it that close to the road thing for you to consider if you go back and look at all these things and get back to it this problem here is that the lot is narrower than next so he's got to right. do he's got to do a narrower longer building i mean i'm i have I've the same concerns as you i have the same yeah. concerns as you yeah. because the town has the right to widen the road to its property yeah. line and so I, I I've got heartburn over this one. I I understood this one. I and the rest of my nope. don't, but I have heartburn over this one. And I I'm sorry to disagree with you, Bill. I apologize, well, but this is our purview about how far back a house is we're yep. going to allow to be set back in the road. And even though we're sending him back for to the drawing board, so to speak, I think we should listen to what the abutters want to say yeah, too. We'll, we'll get that. Okay. I'll get that. And you know, in can, can I interrupt? Yeah, we have under compliance with Title V. If I believe Mr. Cantino has been in in some of the homes, there is, and Bill, you'll understand this. Yep. On the back side of this foundation, you'll see you'll see in all of the homes a dotted line. Yes. That line is. An interior concrete wall to comply with Title V, 20 feet from the house. I mean, 20 feet from the septic system. Yep. Can you pull it any further in and still have your garages? And how do you get a two-car garage in here? I, you know, this plan We're, just doesn't. Because we changed the plan, Cheryl. I, oh. I, as I said again, as as Mr. Yates had said, we're building a two-car garage. I've changed that on the drawing. And I will be glad to come back and show you a revised drawing with two cars. Can you pull the slab down a further? I don't. That understand. slab goes continuously across the back of the house where you drew your line. So it, it goes right up to the garage line. Yep. So how do you get a staircase in here and get two car garages? I don't that's, understand. That's, a that's my problem. Well, we're going to have it. Yeah. We're going to have it on the left hand side of the house. We're changing the floor plan. I've already directed my architect to do so. We have a 16-foot garage door. We have, we have adequate space off the property line for two cars in the driveway. You get 23 feet to the, to the pavement. A pickup truck is 17 feet. The people that have bought these houses are driving mid-sized cars. Every one of them. And any visitors? What do visitors okay. do on Washington Again, now? Again, national standards, not just what we're looking at. National standard design standards. Talk to any site engineer, any architect, everything else. You're 17 to 18 feet is the size of a vehicle, standard vehicle. Now, along with that, no, okay, so again, now you really need to get us an updated set of- Correct, I plans. agree with you. Even with this, that, you know, at 35 feet deep and looking at your floor plans, there were some spaces in there that, uh, to me, are excessive. I've been in the residential. I've been in the residential business for over forty years, so I know spatials and the size of rooms and whatever else. That's a nineteen hundred square foot house. It, it could be made smaller in depth, all right, and still get a very comfortable house. Some of the rooms in here, the bedrooms, are larger than what I have in my house. And my rooms are considered. It's what is the market's driven? Okay, all right. Something for you to consider. Bill, can we 
we don't get to dictate right. how we do this layout as house. But but what was not that, yeah, but suggesting that because it's too close to the road, he, he's, if he, he wants to he's consider. He's saying he can't. I understand. All right. Can All right. we? No. All right. All right. So, is there anything else that's changing in here that we haven't covered? No, sir. Not that I believe. All right. Any other comments, questions? I have a question, though. Oh, yes. I'm, with the process that I'm doing, am I asking for a special permit or a variance? Because uh, I don't know the answer. That's a good question. This. Okay. I'm glad you brought that up, and, and I probably should have covered that in the beginning. The other cases that when you were here before, we dealt with them on the premise that any non-conforming lot, non-conforming structure, no matter what you did to it, created a, required a special permit. Okay. And that was the Gale case that came up several years ago yeah. in the land court. Since then, and we talked about it at the last meeting, there is the Diedrich case, land court case, that has come out and said, and there's some disagreement on this, and yet there's some agreement that if you have a non-conformity, and you're extending on that nonconformity, it's a special permit. If you have just relocating on the property and not creating a new nonconformity, it's a special permit. Soon as you create a new nonconformity, it's a variance. As the board, we talked about this. Ms. Gould, myself, and the building inspector sat down after the end of the meeting and have had a discussion that says, let's make sure we're in agreement. For the building inspector to be telling people when he's issuing building permits, um, whether they advising people whether they need to go to the zoning board or not, it has been agreed that we'll go by the Diedrich case and that any new nonconformity would require a variance. Therefore, with your proposal, there are, you're relocating the house and you still have some nonconformities, that's a special permit. You're creating new nonconformities, that's a variance. So yes, you are acting for both in the same application. Okay. Is the variance because the old house didn't have a setback variance? It, 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 and on the it, back it met the front setback, but now it, it does not. It had so now it has it meets the back side setback, but doesn't meet the front setback. Before it met the front setback, but not the back setback. Is that correct? And it did and not that, meet one side. It did not meet this left, left side setback. But, but does, does it, well because it because yeah. it met the setback for the front before. Does that is what is that what you think makes it a variance? Yes, because okay, it's creating a nonconformity of the front setback. That Whereas it had the other is already that all existed. That answers my question too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you're asking for, my info for yeah. the spe uh, because special permit is because it's a nonconforming lot. Nonconforming lot. Okay. Yeah, because of frontage and area. And the, the original house was, uh, yeah, because of the because it, size. Because and, now it's, yeah. you know, you're meeting all the other. You're just you're just variance for the front setback. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Fields, okay. Yes. Uh, can any, I just, can uh, I just get, make one more comment? To is yeah, that I, I don't want to see if anybody else has a comment. Okay, just, I'll be quick. Right. Um, you very carefully got within the 15-foot side back setbacks on the side. Mm -hmm. Personally, I would have less trouble with less setback on the sides and more setback on the front. I personally, I, I would have less trouble with that because you look at the snow conditions right now that we're looking at, people can't pull right up against their garages and snow truck plows need to go by and all that good stuff. So I, I have heartburn about the, the pull off range for your, to your garage. And I, there's lots of side setback problems with all these houses in here. And if you didn't meet the 15-foot setback, I wouldn't have that heartburn as I do as much heartburn as I do about how close it is. So mm -hmm. I, I understand yeah. your need for area in the house. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm suggesting that personally, I would feel better about that. And I can't speak for the other members of the board. One thing to keep in mind you know, when you go back to your designer, mm -hmm. I don't believe it's a re not a registered architect, correct? The correct. designer. Go back to them, and if you do decide to make the building wider, okay, and to move it back as Cheryl just su suggested, check the distances to the house on the left side and the house on the right side, because the state building code says no less than 30 feet structure to structure. That's our problem. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, and you can still do it because there's probably space enough for them to go. Right. I, any, any other board, I board number, because I do want to get to. I, I just want to say that be, 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 uh, you did. From the last meeting, it was a one-car garage. 
Correct. So you did a two-car garage, which Correct. mitigates somewhat the parking issue. Correct. I just want the board to understand that. They, he, there's been an effort to you know mitigate this, but I still, I still don't understand why you can't just simply create a space on the side for parking. I, I know, um, I know. I just think I you saw look the at full it. set. Yeah. We have in all of our homes, we we build above seasonal high groundwater. We do not want any issue with groundwater at all. That's why you see the elevations in the level yards. In between each house, we capture. That's the other thing that we do. We capture all the water mm -hmm. coming off the roofs, the yards all go into dry wells on mm -hmm. each property. Okay. So. And then you have, you have retainage in front of the dry well to build up the grade. Correct. Over them. Okay. Correct. We can, we can, we can do something on this, as you said. And I think if you mitigate, if you mitigate the lack of parking in front, uh -huh. that you've, you've gone a certain direction and we can do think that on it. this one because on the side we have the area to do so. Well, you should consider it. I would, if that's your flavor, I have no problem with doing so. Well, then we have a hard time arguing that there's going to be cars hanging into right. the street if there's plenty of, you know, if there's parking, I have, car garage, and I have area to do it. I have the equipment, and it's, but I but I understand also why you know, it's not simply the the square footage of the. Um, House above, but you just have to be so far back from the reserve area and the septic tank, and you're only, right. you know, so. Mark, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, just a, a little bit, a couple of things that have already been said. One, yeah, I agree with you. Make sure what we're looking at. A picture's worth a thousand words. Mm -hmm. yep. What we're using is a thousand words because we don't have the right picture. Um, the other thing is, yeah, with the front setback, when we've looked at other requests not to have the uh, proper setback. We've looked at the neighbor's houses and say, well, is it any worse than those? And if it isn't, we've said, okay, yeah, you can encroach upon the setback. In this case, it's in front of the other houses. So um, it's, a, it's a foot in front. Yeah. So if it was even with the others, then I think, you know, personally, I would uh, like a be a little bit more no, in we're favor not looking of the right plan. We don't have the right you're, plan. You're looking at a uh, you're looking at a foundation plan that again is thirty by thirty. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're okay. you're you're killing us with that. Okay. I, I, I can't. And, and I understand all that, and I and I'm very willing to come back and yeah, yeah, and but, do it right. But also, right. to me, part of our opinion. Yeah, those are the two main things, and I guess they're tied into one because I'm saying, oh, it's in front of the other houses, and you're saying, well, it's not really because we don't have the right drawings. So until we have the right drawings, it's just okay. we're spending a lot of time talking. Yep. Yeah, yeah. John. No, I, anything additional? Yeah. Rod, anything additional? <clears throat> Nothing additional. Patrick? No. Alan? Anybody in the audience wish to comment on this? Mm -hmm. I'm Bruce Roth. I'm at 28 Washington Drive, so I'll be right next to the new house that's going up. I have, I have several things to talk about and questions to ask. The first one is the last meeting we attended about this. So, uh, again, it was a variance for the size, so you can move the house you know, to the middle. No problem. So, I thought that was all taken care of because I thought we talked about the front. That was fine. We talked about parking. We agreed on parking and the size. And so, I didn't understand why you're bringing this back. Again, oh, it's a different one. This is the middle here. lot, not the one adjacent to you. Right. But since you moved the other one over, I mean, no, each lot gets treated individually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. This, so this is the middle one. This is yes, the, sir. This yeah. is the one that abuts yeah. us. Yeah. 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 No. no. This is the middle This one. is at number 20, and you got 28. So there's like a couple lots down the street. Okay. I can't it's between it the, the one we just sold and the foundation that we put in. Okay. With the excavator sitting in the have you, have you had a chance to see this plan? No, that one doesn't bother me. I was just curious if it was the one that was right next nope. to us. So. Nope. So are you... Are you here, basically? He's on, yeah, no, the other end show. So you're, you're over here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. A couple okay. more houses down, if they go by numbers. That's closer to Goldsmith? No, that's closer towards Grove. Yep, there, there you, you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Goldsmith is? Up there. Up here? Yeah. And you're down here? He's right where your finger so is. So you're, you're past this house, this, this one that, it, that he's just sold? 
No, I sold the one there. Yeah. That one, one is a foundation in the ground. Foundation. Okay, so this is that we're, we're discussing okay, is one, one you're discussing. Okay, in the sorry, middle. I kept thinking it was. So you have no concerns about this and no comments about this one. Sorry. Okay. It's okay. No, that's a, a but, first. A butters are very important <laughs> no, to us. Said a butter, so I, mean, I thought it was right next. To that's it. a first. A butters are very important to us. My, my only other concern is this, though, is just being yep. not knowing much about this whole system. It's like how you can show up and not have the drawings. And, then, and I, I have drawings, and I was trying to get my architect yeah. to redo the drawings before tonight's meeting. It sounds and, like you have three pieces yeah. of paper and nothing. In, in, in by law, notices are sent out to all abutters within 300 feet of the property line. So That's you should have got a notice in the mail. We did get a, a notice. Right, because you're within 300 feet. So oh. abutters within 300 feet are all considered abutters, okay. not okay. just immediate direct. If I may, that's yeah. not entirely true. The what? drawing that we have approved for the site plan shows a foundation footprint of 30 by 35. Our plans that we're submitting for the construction is 28 by 35. Four, so it's within yeah, that footprint. In, yeah, it's within that footprint, and it's my error in not knowing the process well enough to have the engineer draw a new drawing showing the correct footprint I mean, you matching. Go before the board multiple times before, not for this. this. Isn't the only not for this site that you've built in town. Right? No, I've I mean, built about a hundred houses. Lots of this houses is the these are the first this sites that we've come in with frontage things. Okay. All right. Anything? Any other question, comment? No. Anybody else have a question, comment? I think it's time to uh, entertain a motion to continue the meeting to March 19, 2015, at 7:45 p.m. Who would like to make the motion? I make a motion to postpone the meeting to March 19. Continue. Continue the meeting to March 19 for M and M Realty Trust. It's at 20 Washington Drive. 7.45 p.m. 7.45 p.m. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Um, no, yeah. Patrick, you can't. I'll second. <coughs> Mark, okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the 20 Washington Drive case being continued to March 19, 2015 at 7.45 p.m., signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you very Those much. Opposed? Mm -hmm. yeah, so we got five eyes, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Hi. All right. Thank you very much for your time, and I apologize for the paperwork it, it, not being. I really appre a, appreciate your work, willingness well, to come back and you know, we'll straighten out everything in the meantime. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Thank Good you. Night. Are you in the minister? Yeah. Oh, I went back to the minister. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my daughter. She's oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's in Toronto right now. I know. I've, I've been oh, okay. <laughs> well, she's going to just play good. More like living in a small town. <laughs> okay. Are you still standing now? No, I Okay. It's yours. Yes, we did. Okay. Okay, calling to order the next hearing. Littleton Zoning Board of Appeals will open the hearing. Case number 848A, scheduled for 8, the time is 825. Mandana Haddad for variance or special permit under section 17331. Uh, the intensity of use schedule for a proposed addition at 3 Abenaki Trail. Um, you've seen the uh, presentation before you, so you know, come forward and you can introduce yourself and then present as informally as you like. The board will ask questions first, then we'll ask if there's any abutters present, and then we will um, open it up for discussion. Okay. Hello, my name is Mondana Hatto. I'm married to Kehan Talebi, who is the owner or oh, he's uh, he and his brother are on the D. I would be managing the extension building project. So, and our architect, Mr. Bartlett Harvey, is here with us. So, if there are any technical questions, you know, answer those. Basically, um, yeah. this is your husband. My husband. 
Your architect. My architect. Yes. Okay. But she's the boss. As, she, as should be. I just put it all up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, we all understand. <laughs> So, should I wait for questions? No, you should tell us what you want to do and why. No. Okay. Um, <clears throat> originally, we were going to build this and continue. Uh, currently, we have a 7.6 feet ceiling height, and we wanted to uh, have a higher ceiling in the addition, in the family room and the uh, art room. So we were going to step down within the uh, property and then have those additions. And then talking to a new contractor, he suggested both from a cost perspective and the roof line was complicated to just put everything on one floor. And again, as for later on in life, when we want to leave in one floor, we will have this efficiency where it, everything would be on the f same floor, rather than going downstairs and then being able to get into it. So as a result, because the, the, the land is sort of in a slope, we are on top of the hill in Abenaki, uh, it requires us to put additional steps outside that has uh, required a variance of uh, 14 inches. Or yeah, we'll use two feet for the two feet maximum. Again, so you're, you're the only there. The variance you're asking for really is just this little teeny corner here. That teeny corner there. Yes. That's it. So wait yeah. one moment. Such a difference. <laughs> you yes. have a pre-existing non-conforming lot by virtue of its lot I size. I don't know. Do we? Yes. 19,041 okay. square okay. feet. So are you making these notes? So they have a pre-existing non-conforming lot because the size is only 19,041. They have their pre, their non-conforming as to their, f no, they have 150 frontage. That's all right. So their frontage is okay. Now they have a front setback of 30 to the house Bill, but 28 to the roof on their Abenaki. Uh, is your address Abenaki? 38. Yes, yes, it is. 30 to the trellis, okay. So he's got, no, he's got 28.5 to the roof. No, 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 there's the a proposal. Yeah, oh, there's, there's so there's right now it's 30. 38. No, it's 30.1. To the trellis because of the walk, yeah. So right now you're conforming in front. Yes, we are. Your side setback is conforming. You've yeah. got more you're than 15. You're conforming in And your rear is, yeah. okay. So now you get a foundation. Now you have a new addition. Right. The new addition is going to be closer to the front than 30 feet. You're 28 to the roof there. Is that right, uh, Bartlett? Am yes. I reading that right? Yes, 28 to the roof. And then in the rear, that's all right, too. The rear is 15. Yeah, see. And the side they, is 15. He's done this beautiful little box oh, with the setbacks. Yep. It's wonderful. Yep. It's so so we're just missing a corner I, I, at I the I want everyone uh, to be like stairs. you. Stairs. And if you just give me a minute, I have been telling everyone. But look, we have a bylaw that says you can be as close as your adjacent properties. Do you know how close the steed property is I do not. to the frontage? I do not. Mark, are you here with your handy dandy little uh, no. look it up? Mm -hmm. oh, we did look that up in the building department and it wasn't. Thank you. Okay. Okay, and then we have a, I just want to see one other thing about the. Note if we have two lots, but I think that is frontage, and that might not be. If we have a lot on two streets. Yeah, but this is the address yeah. lot. Yeah, but, it, but we, st we still have an. Where's the intensity you schedule? From the very end. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it says if you have two lots. An additional street setback, that's the additional street setback and not the main street right. setback. Right, that's the side, the one yeah, okay. and the side street have, this one. Okay. have less of a setback. Okay, yeah. so, so you're looking for a variance for this front corner. Yeah. And your argument that I saw was you have um, 
a septic tank in the backyard, which limits expansion to the rear. Yeah, yes. right, just at the cutoff with the setback, so there is no more room yeah, it's to go clear, in the back. It's clear your architect knew the law well and explored all options. And did a beautiful drawing. And did a yeah. beautiful drawing. Oh, you should see the and, um, two, two, two dimensional market that we built. Do you have it with you? No, no, the model doesn't show any problems. Well, not a model. But do you have a drawing up? Well, let me show it. What are you looking for? Oh, oh, no. 17331. Yeah, it's at the back now. Yeah. Yep. Oh, if it's the right section. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was not indicated. Okay, do we have uh, any other board members have questions? Bill, go. You know, you know looking at. I guess the question would go to your architect. You know, you're so very close to yeah. stay within the setback. You know, in looking at the size of the space, I mean, the addition is larger than the existing house. Bigger, it yeah. couldn't squeeze it down a few inches or so and everything else just so that you would not need a variance? Well, the, 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 the foundation that I'm showing does, doesn't by itself require a variance. What happened right. was after that was done and the plan was established, we changed the, essentially we changed the roof structure and we raised the floor level by th almost three feet. So um, I needed to put a column to hold the corner of the roof up. The contractor didn't want to cantilever it out that far. Mm -hmm. And uh, because the ground slopes down and we raised the floor up, the, the steps from the side door to that um, art room extend out farther from the house. So, and I can't, I can't turn the stairs the other way because the ground is slipping down. They go even farther and they still cross the line. So, but, but, but Mike, what? No, I understand all that and everything else, yeah. but you couldn't, right now, the whole thing is 38 feet deep. Could you not you know not have made that another foot or two less, and then you wouldn't need a variance? I mean, I mean the reason I'm asking this, okay, no. I'm not trying to design it for you or anything else, but for the regular standards for the board to grant a variance is to realize that you've looked at all other alternatives and nothing else fits your needs. Well, the, the need was established. You know, in terms of the size of the rooms that were yep. needed. So uh, the floor plan is... Yeah, we did try to trim it down. Actually, it was a little bit, I think, 100 square feet larger. And then we trimmed it down. Uh, however, from if we are making this investment, we want to get as much ROI from it. And trim it further is going to just... I think uh, because no there are going to be two needs. rooms, yeah. So These are two rooms, not, and then there is also a uh, mud room. So what you see there is actually three rooms, not one large space. And uh, there is a uh, bathroom, and uh, so those all are, you know, factored into. Pardon me. Did you say it was an art room or a studio? Yes. Are you an artist? Um, well, we are going to use it. As an art room, yes, I do um, do a little dabble. Good for you. Yes. Um, any other board members want to comment on this? And the, the I, I drove by, um, and I can see the you know the site conditions that you would want to rotate it, and mm -hmm. and but I wanted to comment on the screen porch. Mm -hmm. Bartlett, did you do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> we get so much. Confidence. It's wonderful, and if this looks like that, great. Yes, it is going to. It wasn't on the plan initially, and I said, give me a screen porch, we'll get the one to rest. I got my wish, so if you say no, whatever else you want, I go. So you're satisfied with the porch? Yes, yeah, actually he's going to be sleeping in the balcony. That's going to be his room. I also want to comment that you have hit an unfortunate period of flux in zoning. Two weeks ago, maybe one month ago, we would treat all of these as a change extension or alteration to a pre-existing nonconformity, and it was done by special permit across the board. And a special permit uh, threshold, if you will, is that as long as 
it is in keeping with the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw, it was very easy to grant. About six weeks ago or so, maybe two months ago now, there was a new case that came down and said, you don't treat these all as special permits. If there's a new nonconformity being created, you have to treat that point as a variance. And a variance is a harder standard to achieve. I, for one, don't believe that that's really what that case said or that it should be held that way. And I think there are a lot of colleagues of mine uh, and zoning attorneys that believe, as I do, that this case was a bad, that recent case was a bad decision. And, and be that as it may, we haven't decided fully yet how we're going to go forward and treat this. We're looking at possibly changing the zoning bylaw and other things. Today, we've decided we have to treat this as a variance. However, a variance calls for unusual topography yep. or problems. I drove by this lot. It does fall off steeply. It does, in my opinion, meet the criteria for a variance of this magnitude. Yeah. Just because of the topography of the land, well, I think the way it falls. The location the of the septic tank. And yeah. yeah. And the septic tank, yeah, et cetera. But <coughs> what's a hardship? They're saying their hardship is they can't move it back, and you're saying well, they, well, don't they, they, right. yeah. they don't need it to be this big. Right. They don't need it to be this big. So, so I just want to I just want to make a comment. We're talking about a step. We're not talking about the yeah. the house and the bulk of the house and well, as a practical matter. And the roof overhang. Yeah. And the roof overhang. But uh, we're not talking. Oh, and in fact, after this ice damming, I am going to recommend to every architect in the room that every house should be designed with a large roof overhang. It's even so this, if it's not roofed properly, it, still even a large up. overhang will have ice damming. But so That's anyway. But yeah. anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, so do we have any abutters present that want to speak to this application for or against? Do we have any else, anyone else on the board that wants to yeah, speak to the application? Just want to make note for the record, please. We did get a letter from the from Mr. Bernier uh, as of today's date with a comment saying that if we have an active trail, that they're seeking a variance, no further comment. Um, one other question, we had this as part of our package. Yes. yes. Is it just a one page? Yes. yes. Just I, because it's not number two and number three. That was intended it, to answer the questions on the... Oh, uh, okay, yes. okay. Yes. I'm looking for page number one. All right. Yeah. No, no, I, I understand that now. It's a paragraph that's intended to answer the question number one and question number two on the... On okay, the yeah. Right. Now I understand. I did. didn't realize that's what you were doing. Let's okay. okay. close the hearing. Go ahead and make it. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Two seconds. The hearing is closed. Um, any deliberation? Motion? I'd like to make a motion to grant the variance. Uh, okay, you have to help me reference it. Oh. So it's a variance from section one. 7331. Are you ready, Ms. Dahl? For intensity of use and the intensity of use schedule. Forefront setback um, of 28. Well, less than 30 feet, but no more than, I mean, but no less than 28 feet to the roof, Bill? You wanted two Let's feet. Let's say 25. Right? No less than 20, no closer than 25 no feet. Or than no 25. less than 25 feet. That doesn't mean to go out and redesign more. We're, go to town, no. we're giving you leeway in case you... Well, you do all your trim, your gutter, whatever right, else, and you've got to be careful okay. you don't... We, we don't want you to have to come back, is what we're well, saying. You've got a surveyor out there that says... And you, if you run into a big rock as you try to dig this hole and things move differently by two inches, we don't want you back here. So make it all as shown on, on the plan of uh, Summit Surveying Inc. dated... 1126 And architectural plans by... Yeah, and architectural plans of Brown. Harvey, dated 30 January 2015. Okay. And part of the findings would be, though, as we discussed, for hardship and uniqueness. Okay. You're going to write it. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, did you say no? No. You've got this. Cheryl made the motion. She's right. <laughs> Second the motion. Second. 
John seconds. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None. You're just trying to get me not to say any motions. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for your visit. Good luck. You'll we, we, be invited for a barbecue event. Oh, you yeah. better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. wait till the camera's off before you get bribed. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice job, Brian. Thank you. Yes, he has been in great. Yes. Uh, very, very thorough. Yes. It's a pleasure to have an application like that. Thank you. No, <laughs> try not to make comparisons. Maybe you can get it's a job evident. working for him. <laughs> he, he'd be smart to hire you. <laughs> yes, I agree. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, our favorite applicant is here. <laughs> All by yourself? I was going to say. Oh, no, there's the entourage. <laughs> Okay, so the time is 8.45-ish. Oh, eight, yeah, right. And I'm opening the 8.15 p.m. informal discussion of case number 795B, 15 Great Road 2, LLC, tripartite agreement for lot three. And if you recall, the applicant was here last month, convinced us that there was an insubstantial change in allowing a tripartite agreement for the uh, completion of the road infrastructure and the WWTF. Um, and he asked for us to sign a similar tripartite agreement for the apartment buildings. At the time, I requested that he meet us halfway and let us have a little more done before we sign that agreement and to come back this month and tell us what's up. So I'd like you to start with telling us what happened with the WWTF. Uh, well, the, the um uh, DEP visited the wastewater treatment plant this morning, and um, and the clear water test was passed, approved. It's fully functional, operational, etc. So, um, yeah. So it's actually it's it's a very cool system. Great. It's a great great piece of equipment. And um, your engineer just seemed like he was in love with it. <laughs> well, you know. It really is. A he made me want, you know, think that I should be in love with it too. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, Go down there and look at the cards <laughs> before they get all yucky. You should actually take a trip down. It's pretty impressive. Okay. All of you should take a trip yeah. down. See, so you know, the, the final piece of equipment is um, uh, it's these cartridges. They're about six feet tall, and they they, they look like they have spaghetti, and those those little uh, tubes. They suck water through the tubes, and they have little pores in them that are two microns thick, so bacteria can't fit in those pores. So it just it sucks clean water out. Hmm. So it's it's a very impressive system. Anyway, so so that's done, um, and uh, it'll take DEP probably a week or so to actually issue a formal letter. I think they have up to 30 or 45 days. Um, to, to do that, but I think they'll send us a, an email or something that we can share with the town. But uh, but we are complete. You've got enough effluent in it, and it's going in. It's happy. We don't we don't have enough effluent in it. Um, so that so the 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 point of uh, the inspection today was filled with water. So but what clear they, water clear water. So that's why they call it the clear water test. Okay. So it just proves that you know all pumps were. Um, and all the equipment works, and we still have to um, we still have to get more people living there in order to have enough effluent to actually make the thing work. Oh. So that will happen over the next 30 to 60 days. Um, so, um, in terms of uh, uh, the agreement that um, we'd like to enter into. Uh, the the permit has a list of things that need to be complete, and if they're not, the permit says that you can enter into uh, a bond or a tripartite agreement or whatever. So essentially, you know, we've uh, we entered into an agreement for the common infrastructure at the last meeting. Um, that has a different financing source, which was cash in an escrow account. 
the financing source for the for the apartments in the apartment lot, everything that happens on the apartment lot, uh, is a loan from Enterprise Bank. And so the agreement is identical except the source of the funding is different, which is why there's two agreements. The other agreement, you had money in escrow to finish. Do you with Enterprise as well, or is that a different? Yes. Okay. Also, I'll report to the board that we did check with Chris Heap this morning. Sorry. Yes, it was this morning. Um, it was all week long. He was going back and forth. This morning, he reported that the tripartite agreement is fine with him and that the uh, amounts are fine with him and that he recommended we could go ahead and sign it. I'm just curious how close you are to occupancy on anything down there. Not as close as we'd like to be. Mm -hmm. So I, I drove by today. Yeah. You know, the, the snow has not been kind to uh, people in our business. So we, we, we thought we would have people living in, uh, you know, sometime in mid to late March. My sense is it's going to be mid to late April at the earliest. Okay. It's still waiting. Quick question. In, in the agreement, right off the start, the board, about 15 Gray Road LLC, 15 Gray Road 2 LLC, and VGL LLC. Who's VGL LLC? VGL LLC is the uh, owner of the apartment portion of the complex, which is on lot three. So what's a V stand for? Village Green. Okay. All right. So we just tried to abbreviate. Uh, yeah, because in other documents, it, you know, it spells out who they are, and it gives the initials, and this one wasn't, okay. Ask a stupid question. So, just I mean, you have the slide. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm trying to understand. I understood why we had a special agreement with the houses because some of the houses were finished and under purchase and sale, and they wanted to get occupancy permits to move those in. We're not in that situation here with the apart with the apartment buildings. So, I'm not quite sure why we're doing this at this point. You? Because the decision that we made permits them to either be finished or to post a bond for what's left to be finished. And they're of the opinion in mind that they don't want to wait for another meeting if they get done and if they get it ready to occupy. We ask them to defer till this meeting, thinking that we'd be ready by the end of March. It is possible, even likely, that they could be ready as early as um, March for the first unit. They don't know that for sure yet. So they just don't want to so, wait So, and this meeting. bond is not for the for the sewer no. treatment plant. This is for the roadways and the plantings and the yes. and the and the make it look nice yes. areas and, and club areas and the pool house and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's for uh, the final pavement, the landscaping and things of that nature on lot 3. And which is the apartment lot. They're yeah. not going to get done in the next month, so there's no point in saying wait till the next month. Oh, there no, won't be anything of course it doesn't. Done. I mean, I'm, yeah. I, we so can keep dragging you here night after night after yeah. night. The, the agreement wouldn't change whether it's this month or, or next month. Next and, month. And, and just because you're slowed down for weather doesn't mean that you should need to keep coming back month after month after month. I understand that. Okay. Thank Any you. other questions? Everybody ready to... Uh, I guess, do we need a vote to sign this? Make a motion to, to vote that I sign it, that's all. Okay, make a motion that the Chair Gould sign the Trade Party Agreement for 15 Great Road LLC and VGL LLC. Second. On behalf of the board? Yeah. On behalf of the board. I'll second it. Cheryl, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Do you have the official uh, document there? Do you have it here? I, I just got it. Can you just take yours? Do you need that? I have a blank. Oh. Oh. I got a blank. Just for just give me one. Take the whole thing. So, so we have one with uh, just your signature? Instead? Yep. Instead of a bunch of lines. Thank you. I'm going to take it to sign three. That's a different one. Do you have more copies than one? Yeah. Let's hear you, Norman. 
You just want to notarize me? This one. Okay. Um, I think that's all the business tonight. If you want to make a motion to close, anybody have oh, anything? Oh, I see. Else? This one has three lines for three of us to sign, and we're just going to let her sign. That's fine. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs>